everybody, Mark here from 8-Minute Axe. So a few days ago, my brother asked me what my next video was gonna be about, and I told him that I'm doing a transcription of the Hotel California intro. Now, just about everything out of my brother's mouth is sarcastic, so I wasn't surprised when he said, ah, oh, the Jethro Tull song. I'm sure many of you are aware Hotel California was added to the list of songs whose originality is being disputed. In other words, people think the Eagles ripped the song off. Today I'm gonna to give you a brief history of some of the more famous songs that have been subjected to plagiarism disputes. I will also weigh in as to how original a song Hotel California is. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing and don't forget to ring the bell so you're notified when I upload new videos. And most importantly, please leave a comment below. Okay, so let's jump right into it. For the first 30 years of rock and roll's existence, plagiarism claims were few and far between. In 1971, George Harrison was enjoying the success of his first post-Beatles solo album, All Things Must Pass. The first single, My Sweet Lord, was climbing the charts on its way to number one when Ben Gerson of Rolling Stone remarked, that the song was an obvious rewrite of the Chiffon's hit, He's So Fine, that resulted in a plagiarism suit that dragged on in the courts for years. So the courts determined that George had subconsciously and not deliberately copied the song. Regardless of whether George was conscious, subconscious, or unconscious, he was ordered to pay $587,000. A clear message had been sent. In 1984, John Fogarty was sued over plagiarizing his own song. Fogarty signed away all the rights to his Credence hits to Fantasy Records. Fantasy claimed that his 1984 release, The Old Man Is Down the Road, sounded too much like his classic Creedence song, Run Through the Jungle. Fogarty defended his compositions on the stand. He literally brought his guitar to the witness stand, where he proceeded to play excerpts from both songs, demonstrating that many songwriters, himself included, have unique styles that can make different compositions sound similar to less discerning ears. In 1990, Vanilla Ice released his hit song, Ice Ice Baby. The main riff is a sample of the riff to Under Pressure, the David Bowie and Queen song. Now this one will ultimately go down as a watershed moment in the history of stupidity. All you have to do is watch the 15 second clip of the Iceman trying to explain how the parts differ to know everything you need to know about it. The Iceman settled out of court for a hefty sum and we all moved on with our lives. So this is the way things went on for years. In most cases, if the claim had enough merit, parties would get together, they would settle on a sum and they would go their separate ways. And then something happened. The way we consume music changed. Songwriters who were once raking in millions of dollars each year in royalties from terrestrial radio and album sales now saw their checks dwindle down to pennies on the dollar. You see, streaming music doesn't pay very well, and it certainly doesn't translate into big dollars for songwriters. So in came the lawyers and the algorithms and the lawsuits. The Marvin Gaye, Robin Thicke case in 2013 was a game changer. If you don't know it, Marvin Gaye's estate sued Robin Thicke, producer Pharrell Williams, and anybody else associated with the song Blurred Lines, claiming that it was a ripoff of Gaye's song Got To Give It Up. Now, if you want to point directly at a single event being responsible for the proliferation of lawsuits that we've seen explode over the past seven years, this is it. In just about all previous copyright cases, the suit focused on either the lyrics or the melody. However, in this case, the court allowed the studio arrangement, background chatter, bass line, and even the cowbell, and yeah, I'm not joking, even the cowbell to be entered into the record, and the jury was given specific instructions that they could take those things into consideration. Even though the songs don't sound much alike, when you factor all those things in, Gay won big. His estate initially got awarded about $7 million, and the verdict basically declared open season on any and all music. There have literally been hundreds of claims over the past seven or eight years. It's gotten so out of hand that even Peppa Pig was accused of plagiarism. So what about Hotel California? Now I gotta tell you, the Eagles are a hard band to want to go to bat for. They're notorious YouTube blockers and their Hell Freezes Over tour pretty much redefined what an overpriced concert ticket is. Not only did they pioneer the corporate rock structure that so many bands would emulate throughout the 80s, but it seems like they're actually getting even grumpier and greedier. Did they pinch their most famous song from Jethro Tull? The song in question is called We Used to Know. It's on Tull's second studio album, Stand Up. The songs are in two different keys. However, the first six chords of the eight chord chord progression are exactly the same. Those of you that are not musicians may be wondering if that's a big deal. There are literally thousands of songs that share chord progressions. Most pop and rock songs only consist of three or four chords. The chances of some of them being the same are pretty darn good. Now I'm a big Jethro Tull fan, and I probably heard the song we used to know over 200 times. Never once did I think that it even sounded remotely like Hotel California. We Used to Know is a sparsely produced, dirge-like song in the key V minor that never strays from the same progression. It kind of builds 
over the course of the four minutes. It's in 6-8 time. The chords change every bar rather than every two bars, so the melody is different, and there's a flute solo in it. The whole thing just feels different, it sounds different, it's different. If anyone was gonna have a bias about it, it would be Ian Anderson, the leader of Jethro Tull and the guy that wrote the song. In multiple interviews, he makes it clear that although the chord progression is the same, he feels the songs are drastically different. Now, conspiracy theorists like to point to the fact that the Eagles opened for Tull on their 1972 tour, and Tull did play We Used to Know in the set. There's only one problem with the assumption that that's where they got it, and that is Don Felder wrote Hotel California. He wrote the chord progression. He wrote the melody. He didn't join the Eagles until 1974. I think it's really hard to refute the fact that Hotel California is a great song. It's original. It's unique. You have that beautiful arpeggiated 12 string intro, which sets the mood. Those two tom hits that to this day I still play air drums on before the vocals come in. Henley's vocals are kind of laid back and the lyrics are mysterious. When I sing along, I feel cool. You've got those two great question and answer choruses with tight harmonies, and then they hit you with the solo. Felder and Walsh were at the top of their game. They were firing on all cylinders. The way it comes together at the end for that harmony coda just makes it that much more awesome. It's tough defending the Eagles. It's even tougher calling them Eagles. I don't know if you knew this, but they're actually not the Eagles, they're Eagles. I've been saying the Eagles because I feel stupid saying Eagles. Whether it was divine intervention, pure luck, a lot of practice, or something else that caused Don Felder come up with those chords and that melody, I know it wasn't Jethro Tull. Let me know what you think. I read a few threads and I know people have some very strong opinions about this. So I look forward to your comments. I look forward to you making your case. Uh, please don't forget to subscribe. Please like the video and take care.